G'day everyone and welcome to a weekend report for the 6th of April. Now today, because Bitcoin's really consolidating and just chopping around, what I wanted to do is explore some of the tools that I personally track and keep an eye on and a few frameworks to think about things when looking for what could a Bitcoin dip look like. Now, we're actually in a very unique position. Sometimes Bitcoin, and particularly in the on-chain world, we talk about cohorts quite a bit. Sometimes we go through some things that I guess you could equate to a bit of a blue moon where you get certain cohorts that kind of flip their bias or they, they go through a bit of a transition where we can actually get a lot of information that we don't have at all points in the cycle. We'll talk about this in more detail. So what I want to do is, is really explore this idea of as we've broken the all-time high, just think about it, we've only been above the previous cycle all-time high since early March. Now, the long-term hold of threshold is about 155 days. And given that we're hovering at or just above, and believe me, there's very, 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 very few people who actually bought their coins and still hold them from the tippity top all time high. So my block cock tells me we're at $68,040. And as a result, that means that just about every single coin who's realizing or in loss is a short term holder. Now, this gives us a really quite an insightful thing to pay attention to because Here's a bit of market psychology. We'll explore this in more detail. People have to sell the bottom. Markets, generally speaking, find their lows when people who bought recently kind of have a mini capitulation. They all panic sell at the exact wrong time. If you've done any kind of trading, especially with leverage, you've probably experienced this where you open a position, the market immediately trades down below you, you hold it, you hold it, you hold it, and then you finally go, that's it, I'm done, I, I can't carry this thing anymore, and you sell, and of course the market rallies right back again. And if you're even lucky, you'll probably go back to your cost basis, buy it again, and it goes down again. This is just the nature of how most people, this is why markets generally favor the top 5% of traders, the vast majority of people lose in markets, the truth of the matter is, and we're looking this one here, we'll spend a bit of time, this is SOPA, these red zones are when people do exactly what I just described. They sell the bottom, they've bought up here, they sell at a loss, and more often than not, that tends to be the exact wrong point in time. This is Market Psychology 101, and we're actually going to explore how we can visualize and see this inside on-chain data. And really, this is some of the most powerful stuff. And we'll look at it from a derivatives perspective with funding rates. We'll look at it from MVRV and SOPA notes specifically for short-term holders. And we'll spend a little bit of time looking at long-term holders too, because they're kind of the reverse of this situation. Now, as always, please do give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. It really does help this channel. It is a new channel, so please do give me a, a thumbs up if you can. Um, let me know if you have any comments. And if you do get an opportunity to actually tweet it out or tell other people about the channel, it would be hugely appreciated. All feedback is fantastic. Uh, we're certainly growing and learning as we go. Right, let's get stuck into it. Okay, so this is actually one of my personal dashboards on Glassnode, and there will be a link to this one in the description below. Um, just bear in mind that some of these charts will be on high resolution. These will mostly be available for our pros, um, people who are on T3 plans, um, but several of these you will still be able to find on the T2 package. Nevertheless, what we're looking at here with futures funding rate, let's start with the derivatives market. Now, you can see that this is a net positive. We actually saw funding rates explode quite meaningfully higher as we rallied into the peak at 73K. And this is really showing you that there was a lot of long bias and the speculation kind of hit a bit of a premium. Now, as we saw, we've started correcting and started consolidating. The market's been chopping around in this zone. We had another peak, but funding rates in general are cooling off. And we've actually got a fairly substantial decline at the moment. Um, on an annualized basis, it's somewhere in the order of about 10% per year is the current yield on these futures. So it is cooling down. That's generally a good sign. When we're seeing a cooling down of funding rate and this concept of cooling down, you'll actually see this spread across pretty much all the metrics that we look at today. So keep this idea that we had this explosion of long interest and it seems to be just calming down a little bit and it's getting there at a more structural basis. Now, just before I jump on, note these large red spikes here in funding rate on major sell-offs. Granted, this was the FTX low and then that first sell-off. We haven't actually had a major negative print uh, since that point in time, but these points are forced sellers points of mini capitulation. This was obviously a major capitulation when FTX went live, but this concept of people selling the wrong moment in time, usually near the bottom, is actually very, very common, more common than you may expect. In fact, markets 
have been doing this forever. People always buy local tops and they almost always sell local bottoms. This is just the nature of the beast. The nice thing here is that we can actually start to visualize it. Now, this chart is just an oscillator. All we're looking at here is it's a, a statistical model looking at open interest. So very, very high level. Big numbers or higher oscillator values, particularly those above the red line, mean that the amount of open interest in futures markets has increased quite significantly over a short span of time. Now, what that's really telling you is that there's been a big buildup of leverage. Here's our 73K peak. We actually had one and two major spikes. We had another spike right into when all the, um, uh, just after all of the ETFs have gone live. And we saw another spike as the ETFs were in the process of being approved. And all of these indicate that there's been a big buildup of leverage. Now, when we get to these blue zones and these low levels, it's the opposite. It means that we've actually had a fairly substantial flush out of overall leverage. Now, what we can see is that since that peak at 73K, there was, and we saw in the funding rate above, a bit of long bias. This is now cooling off quite significantly. We've actually tagged this lower statistical band once and twice. Now, we've jumped up a little bit, but by and large, we're actually seeing that open interest is cooling down. Again, this theme of cooling down, we're now seeing it across both futures. Now, of course, this consolidation, we're still processing it. We don't really know which way it's going to go. We never do. What we're doing is trying to assess, has the market got rid of a lot of that excess, that speculation? The things that just put things a little bit out of balance, are we cooling down on that perspective? Now, moving into the on-chain space, now this is actually probably the most important part of this series. Short-term holders, because we're at or just above the all-time high, and we've only been here for, you know, uh, what is it, a month and a half now, we have to look at short-term holders. They are the only people who could possibly be holding a realized loss right now. Because all the coins from the previous cycle, which are disproportionately long-term holders, right? Only kind of people on the leg up here are going to be short-term holders. So everybody else is in just net profit. If you're a long-term holder, it's really quite impressive if you're holding any kind of losses. You really had to buy the tippity top and that's all you had to buy because we look at it in terms of everyone's balance. That's the only coin you ever bought and you're still holding it and you're kind of tussling with break even. The people who are realizing a loss are actually people who bought the absolute top, the 73K and above, basically above 68,000. So when we're looking at losses, this here, for MVRV, this is unrealized loss. We'll look at SOPRA in a second, which is actually probably the most important chart in this series. But notice that short-term MVRV, remember the unrealized profit or loss, how much profit or loss the short-term holders are in is cooling down as well. Now, what this means is that the short-term holder cost basis and price are converging. Now, I'm actually just going to zoom in here on, let's go maybe on a two-year basis just to really get a, a, a bit of a view of what's going on. So the short-term holder cost basis is climbing because lots of coins, because of these ETFs, have moved in recent history. We'll talk more about this in a second. So this climbing of short-term holder cost basis is basically telling us that if you consider that model to be some kind of a fair market model, generally speaking, the short-term holder cost basis tends to provide support during uptrends. People tend to buy their cost basis. It's currently hovering at about $57,500. So it, you know, if we were to get a correction, that would certainly be an area of interest down there. Been, you know, 57, 58K, that would be where you really have to see short-term holders put some work in and defend their cost basis. Generally speaking, in uptrends, it should hold. Now, what we also see, now I will call this, see this little red zone here and even this red zone here? This is what I call an undercut. And this is actually perfect. Yes, the short-term holder cost basis provides support, but it doesn't provide perfect support and it shouldn't provide perfect support because sometimes you actually need people to feel just a little bit of pain where the market goes just that little bit below their cost basis and they panic and they do the wrong thing at the wrong time. They create liquidity for the people who did in fact want to step in and buy that dip and it kind of flushes out the lettucey hands, right? This is part of the process of markets. So these undercuts are really quite healthy. On an MVRV basis, this means that they're just under their cost basis. So you've got a bunch of people who are starting to sweat. But remember, MVRV, an unrealized profit or loss, doesn't tell us what they're doing. It's telling us how they're feeling. They don't necessarily take action, but we know that they're feeling a little bit tense because prices come back to their cost basis. 
And that is where SOPA actually comes in. And short-term SOPA, this is, I I mean, if I was given one metric on a desert island, it's going to be short-term SOPA. It is the most powerful metric that I've ever come across in on-chain analysis. It is such a good tool because it is telling us what the hot ball of money is doing. What is the average profit or loss they are locking in or not? Now, we spoke about those undercuts. If there's one metric that I pay attention to for dips, Yes, we've got a cooling down of funding rates. That's good. We've got a cooling down of overall leverage. That's good. We've got MVRV cooling down, that convergence between price and their spot price and the uh, on-chain cost basis. Also very good. But the thing that really gets me excited is when we get short-term SOPA dipping down and getting a nice little one-two undercut. Remember, short-term holders are the only people that could possibly realize a loss now that we're at all-time high. So this is telling you that some folks Panic sold the exact bottom, the exact bottom. Now, of course, these are bottoms within a consolidation. Let's keep all these things in perspective. This, for example, right? You could have read this as a bottom, but the bottom actually came a little bit later. But both of these were telling you that people who bought high sold low. And that's usually the, if you're a contrarian, that's what we're looking for. Now, of course, all of this assumes that we're in an uptrend. And thus far, the uptrend appears to be fairly robust. That uptrend will end at some point in time. It could end tomorrow. If short-term SOPA, for example, breaks down below the break-even level and stays there, that is where you start to go, okay, maybe now we're not talking about a dip, we're talking about a downtrend, right? So you can actually use this in, it's an all-weather metric, it really is. So what we're looking for is really nice undercuts of the break-even level of one. That is telling you that people who bought high are selling low, And more often than not, that's actually a pretty positive sign. If people kept taking profits, this metric wants pressure to the upside because profit taking will push this metric higher. Loss making will push this metric lower. So getting to the break even level means two things. Profit taking is slowing down and the people who bought high are selling low. And these two things, if you're a contrarian thinker, especially if we got back to a short-term holder cost basis and you get one of these beautiful angry prints, something really nasty like this, that's starting to look like a dip. That's the kind of thing that I'm generally paying attention for. But remember, it's super important that SOPA, once it gets angry, it has to get back above one. You have to move back into a profit-taking regime. If you start seeing it finding resistance at the break-even level of one, let's say it breaks below, comes back up and retests and then fails and keeps chopping around below, you have now initiated not just a couple of panic sellers, you've actually initiated a lot of panic sellers and that's net supply coming back to the market. Generally speaking, that's not a great sign. So that's where you start to go. Maybe this isn't a dip. This is starting to move into something a little bit bit more of a downtrend, so to speak, over whatever time frame that is. Now, if we look at it um, mechanically, what's really going on, this is realized losses by short-term holders. You can actually see that their realized losses measured in dollar value peak at the lows of dips. We get a peaking of realized loss at the exact wrong time. This is people selling the bottom. It's kind of one of these funny things that we see these losses play out time and time again. Large spikes in realized loss, especially from short-term holders, it's actually a little bit of a contrarian signal. Now, if we look at the balance of coin wealth held in profit or loss, it is also cooling down. So in terms of short-term holders, their overall supply balance is coming back down. And again, note these retests. During uptrends, we actually want to see these really nice rallies above and then a retest of the break-even level. Note that in bears, we get a retest of resistance. So that break-even level of one is a resistance level in bears, but a support level, especially with an undercut, during uptrends. So if we presume that this uptrend remains healthy, which thus far I see most evidence to say that it is, we should be looking for this thing to retest, get a bit of an undercut, get just a little bit of panic in the market, and then get a nice little bounce. If we don't get a bounce and we actually breaks down below, then we have to flip our bias. But until that point in time, we want to see the undercut, we want to see a little bit of pain, that's then a good sign. Now, just to kind of bring everything back because that's the short-term holder component. We do need to keep in mind the long-term holders because they are the primary selling force right now. Long-term holder supply continues to decline. I did some calculations the other day. GBTC accounts for something on the order of about 30 odd percent of this spending. 
The other 70% is coming from just good old fashioned hodlers taking profits near the all time high. So we do have supply coming back to the market. Now our binary spending indicator is starting to slow down, but we still have a fairly substantial downtrend. Remember, downtrends in long term supply are very normal for bulls. People taking profits is very normal. But it's also critical that it doesn't overwhelm the inflowing demand. Now, these ETFs are obviously helping because we're still seeing inflows, but they too are cooling down as we covered in the video the other day. So we do still have this sell side pressure and we can actually see it here. This is looking at um, same as we looked at realized losses for short term holders. Here we're looking at realized profits for long term holders. I have done a uh, conversion into a, a Z score because I care about statistically large profit taking. We can see that the profit taking by long term holders into the top is a very, very meaningful part of what put that top in. Profit taking is supply coming back to the market and just oversaturate demand. Now, that doesn't mean it oversaturates demand completely forever. It may do at some point at a bull market top, it really does. It saturates it for many years. But that doesn't mean that this particular spike is, let's call it the top. It's a top, it's a point of time where enough profit taking happened that it just got the market a bit overheated. Now, note here, I mentioned before that SOPL and MVRV and these things will cool down when profit taking slows. Long term profit taking, despite the fact that coins keep being spent, we are seeing that the degree of profit is actually declining. What this means is that coins aren't being revalued from 16K or 5K or 2K or $500. They're being revalued from long term holders at 40K or 60K or some other magnitude. We're kind of seeing that those coins are, the, the profit taking by and large is slowing down. We're not seeing coins coming from massively old cost bases and people taking huge profits. Generally speaking, things are calming down. So let's do a very, very quick summary. What we have is funding rates are cooling down, still a little bit higher, but normal for a bull. We've got overall open interest has peaked into the, into the um, 73K peak, but is really cooling down. We've got short-term MVRV, which is cooling down. That's excellent. And we have to keep in mind that somewhere around 57, 58K is where that cost basis is. If we were to get some kind of a correction lower, that would certainly be an area of interest. SOPA is cooling down and we haven't quite got that last undercut. Let's just zoom back up here. Short-term SOPA, we've got one, two tests. This is good. These are both very, very positive. These are things that I was paying attention to and watching for. If we get another one with a nice little angry undercut, that to me would be absolutely fantastic, but that also doesn't to guarantee it. This too is cooling down and we've got our realized profit by long-term holders cooling down. So overall, this consolidation is pretty much doing what a consolidation should do. It's kind of resetting people's expectations, resetting cost bases, allowing a bit of a cooling down. It is literally the market taking a rest and it looks quite healthy, to be perfectly honest. I think it's really, really constructive. Um, we're seeing a lot of the patterns that you wanna see in an uptrend. The next thing to pay attention for is that retest of, of the break even level across any of those metrics we covered and keep an eye out for if it breaks below and starts finding resistance, could be a trend change. If on the other hand, we get to bounce, that's essentially what we look for during uh, during uptrends. That's more or less what I pay attention to. It shows that we've had that flush out, top buyers, selling low, generally speaking, that aligns with lows. Anyway, hopefully you found that useful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.